Welcome back, everybody, to Unconditional Surrender in Europe, game designed by Salvatore Vasta, published by GMT Games. This is the East First series of recordings. We are getting ready to go into February of 1943. And so away we will go. Um, yeah, nobody declared war on anybody. So now we're doing uh, production. The British are at uh, 26, 8 plus 5. The Russians, the Germans are at 32. The Russians are at 36. So it's 5 plus 4 lend lease is 9, and 9 euros factories is 18. Uh, and then they give one to the Turks. And I'm not sure what he was doing with his Italians. But he gave one to the Italians and then he had to set his Yugoslavs and Romanians at two. And now we're on into the strategic warfare phase. Uh, the Russians are at plus three because he has nine con conquered countries. And the Germans have... Um, unit here in Stravenger. So he's on C-Zone 3 for the strategic warfare, so he gets a plus one. Uh, we discussed a little bit, and I showed him, you know, I kind of said, hey, you're at zero lost factories, or one lost factory, can't get any lower. So he held on to his sub. We went to combat commitment. Then he rolled a four plus one is a five, and I rolled a three plus three is a six, so that's a diamond, so nothing happened to the Axis, or the Russians. Uh, and then he went ahead and took a chance on the on the West die roll, because it's plus three on my defense, because I have one bombed marker, which I just put out in the ocean, and then plus two, because the U.S. is in the, in the war. And he rolled a three, two plus one, and I rolled a four plus three is a seven, so chipped up a factory. And now we go to strategic movement, and he picks up the infantry unit. Uh, go back so you can see where it came from. He had an infantry unit behind those two panzers uh, heading down towards Brest, and he picked it up and moved it over here into Trest, uh, Trieste, and then brought his strategic move marker to put on top of it. The British... I believe, well, as I did, let's go down here. Yeah, I used to have a strategic move marker there. And I really didn't have one. I figured I'm pretty much everywhere I need to be at the moment. And in the Soviets, I kept on trying to figure out which one. I took an infantry unit from the north, and he traveled all the way down into Turkey. Uh, it's a regular infantry unit. I'll probably use it to make a guards unit at some time in the future. But I figured it wouldn't hurt to have some uh, real Russian infantry backing in case he decides to launch some kind of a surprise, you know, march across the straits here and head towards Ankara. Uh, wanted to try and keep the Turks in the war. And I was trying to figure out where I put them, and I ended up putting them there. Then we moved into... Axis operations. Uh, I'm not sure. I think he starts. Does he start here? Oh, yes, the Italians. Let me zoom in a little bit here. So you can see a little better. Uh, I've got things all in the wrong places. There we go. So here we are in the desert. He spent a point and moves the 9th Battalion Infantry over here. That's so that he can trace out the supply because I had cut off the supply to Dubrook last turn. And he's trying to get it back into supply to hang on to it for a while. And he did attack me. Uh, that was 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 out of 8 movement points. So he did attack the 10th, uh, went to combat commitment. 
This is us just setting the, the base die rolls. Uh, he did not commit. He wasn't really interested in winning that. I did commit because I wanted to try and hold that space. So I used the airplane there, the first RAF. So it was a 0 to a 1. He rolled a 1. It's like, if ever I could roll a 5 or a 6 here, so to flip that guy would have been perfect, but I only rolled a 3, so it just did nothing. Uh, then we went to... Ah, now he's doing... He's attacking with a 6 lift to the second RAF, I believe. Rolls a four, minus two is a two, and I ended up with a one, so we each took a sortie. And then we went ahead and rolled for the next one, but really it didn't matter because we each had one sortie, so we're both were going to be sortied out. Um, so that was kind of wasted die rolls on our part. And I'm not sure if he did anything else in the Mediterranean. Ah, yes, he moved his... Convoy and his fleet to Tobruk, and I just let him go there. So, I figured I'm going to spend all my sorties trying to interdict his supply to keep people out of supply here in North Africa. Uh, now he goes over here in the east, and he uh, does an assault here on the 13th. Uh, I start off at a zero. He starts off at three. Um, he's three for the armored, one for the infantry, minus one for the weather. So he starts off at three. Uh, we went to combat commitment, I believe. Yes, we do. And I committed because I really want to hold that hex because it's in front of Rostov and I really don't want to Bollocks that up. That was silly. I just came to the realization that this Russian convoy is actually useless here, where it's at, because the only thing it could invade would be Sevastopol. If I had such an inclination. I was thinking I could go over and invade around Istanbul or whatever. But I can't, because that's a two-hex invasion. That's a two-C-zone invasion, and Russians can only go one. So I can only invade in C-zone 30 here. So without Sevastopol as a port, there's no invasions really on the Baltic coast, or on the Black Sea coast that I can really make. So I just realized that just now, that that convoy is really kind of useless there. Uh, so he played tanks. I threw in an airplane and tanks. So I went whole hog for this. So he ended up at plus four, I ended up at plus two. He rolled a four plus four, which is eight. And then I rolled a six, so I really didn't need to throw all those things, but like I told him, I said if I hadn't committed, I'd have probably rolled a one. So, stopped that assault. Stuff goes back on the turn track. Uh, next, he goes, moves the Romanian into there. And goes to assault this infantry unit and he flew up an airplane before he resolved the assault. That's why I put down the markers. Uh, I think we're in combat commitment here. And he committed and I chose not to. I figured it really wasn't worth trying to cut off the armored unit from supply or whatever, it still can't move, so it's stuck in that mountain hex. Uh, so he went up to a 4 to a 0, he rolled an 8. I rolled a 1, so I'm gone. Um, it doesn't matter about Soviet national will because it's 1943, but I'm keeping track of it, or trying to, just for kicks. Um, So now he does an assault up here. On 
on this guard's unit sitting right there. Oh, so he starts off with it's two and then three and then four. And combat commitment. Both committed. Um, he threw an airplane. I threw an airplane. So this is us doing the air combat. I start off at minus two because of the poor weather. It's that aircraft that's sitting there. And then he committed the aircraft that's down here, the fourth lift, it's the one that can reach. And so he started off at minus two as well, because it's minus two for weather, plus two for German, minus two for sorties. So it's minus two to minus two. You rolled a six minus two, which was a four. I rolled a six minus two, which was a four. So we each took a sortie. And we each got to add one to our combat die roll. So he's three, four, five, minus one for the weather, and I'm plus one for elite, plus one for the airplane. And he rolled a six plus four is a ten, and I rolled a four, so I am flipped and retreated. And then he took the hex of the airplane, moved back a space, and we got rid of those salt markers. And then he moves this garrison unit, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Basically trying to keep me from uh, doing too many terrible, horrible, nasty things. Um, now I think he's up here in the north. I think he's going to do an assault. Yeah, he assaults the shock army. Starts with the armor was three and then four and five. So he should be at net of four to start with. Minus one for that, and I'm plus one because I'm elite. And we're in combat commitment, which to no one's surprise, we commit. So he throws in his fifth luft. I throw in my. Uh, I can't remember which one I threw in. I think I threw the one in from the north. Uh, but anyway, I'm a minus two. He's a net zero, plus two for German, minus two for weather. And he rolled a four, and I rolled a three minus two is a one, so I took two sorties. He took one. We each added in our one point. So he's, it was all the way up to six minus one, so he's five to my two. It was a four plus five is a nine. And then I rolled a 5 plus 2 is a 7, so I actually held the hex. I thought for sure I was going to be at least retreated, if not flipped. So, uh, he moves the Romanian into Odessa to point out to him that I can't actually invade there. He can bring that guy back to the front. And then he moves the 7th up towards the north because he's kind of low on physical number of units up here. And now he does a swap of rule. He gets the garrison out of the front line and puts the Yugoslav in the front line on the Kerch Peninsula. I'm not sure what we're doing here. Supply already? I don't think there's any more attacks in the east. I think we might be doing supply. I don't know what we're doing. Defender die roll out of our three. Like what I have is a Oh, I know what we're doing. I think we're way over here. Oh, I was trying to set up the defender die rolls, and he said, uh, 
This is me doing. Not sure what's going on here. I think we're doing supply. That's what we're doing. Because I was attacking, he's trying to draw supply out of here to, for the Tobruk guy. And the med fleet is plus two for, because it's fair down here, plus two for the British fleet leaves me at a net of minus one. His fleet is at minus four. So five minus one is a four. He did not roll a six, so. He takes two sorties. And then I go after the convoy, and now I'll be minus two. To his uh, minus two for sorties, minus two for um, convoy, so he's also at minus four again. And. Then I rolled a 3 minus 2, which is a 1. He rolled a 4. He should have been minus 2. He should have been minus 4. He rolled the attack die roll. See there? That should actually be a 4 there. Minus 4, so it would have been a 2. So a 1 to a 2 is a diamond. So I went up to 5 sorties, and then I said, well, I'm not done in that C zone. I'm going to go ahead and use... That cost him a sortie for combat, and then I attacked him with the airplane next. Uh, so I start off at plus one. Plus one because I'm attacking a naval unit, and then minus three. So I should be at minus one, and he's at minus five because his convoy is minus three plus minus two for a convoy. So I just had to roll well to get him. Roll to four minus one is a three. And at minus five, he couldn't do anything about it, so he goes up to five sorties. And the guy underneath here, the 11th, suddenly goes into no supply, because that's who he's trying to supply. But then he tries to supply him again. Now I'm um, minus four for sorties, plus two for the aircraft and being in a in the thing. So I should be at minus two. There we are. Oh, I just went through it. Yep. So I rolled a five minus two is a three, so I managed to stop the supply out of Tobruk. So next he went and tried to supply the Tobruk guy out of Benghazi. So I intercepted with the American fleet. Uh, so I'm plus two minus one for sortie, so I'm a plus one, and he's a minus six because he's minus four sorties, minus two for convoy, and I rolled a one, so he gets through, so that guy is no longer in no supply, and then he went and supplied the tenth army, so I went after him again at a zero, and I rolled a two. So that guy got through. And then he had to make the other two guys go to no supply because he has nobody left to supply with. So. And then he also does a, a sortie up here to supply his airplane in Norway. And then we go into Western Ops. Uh, I think I'm going to be down here. Uh, I moved the 10th back a space and call for an assault just in case I should think I would want to do it. I move the 8th army to there. That's 1, 2, 3. And then 4, 5 to attack him. Because he's at low supply. And uh, do we have to go to combat commitment? I think we do. But we set the movement points. Uh, we set him. He starts off at minus 2. I start off at 3. We go to combat commitment. No surprise. Uh, I throw in my airplane. He throws in his tank. 
So now he goes up to zero and I go up to five. So plus five to zero should, I rolled a two, plus five is seven. He rolled a one. So I managed to get him flipped. So I went ahead and took the hex. Figured I should try and eliminate this battalion unit. So now I'm down to three movement points left. And I rolled a one, plus three is a four. Uh, six minus four is a two, so he's retreated. I thought long and hard about that. It looks like I moved really quick, but I actually thought about it and I said, no, I'm gonna take the chance and go into low supply uh, just to be able to try and kill this guy. So I went after him and he could throw in his airplane at this point, which he did. See it here in a minute. Just trying to keep his guy alive. Throws in the airplane, so he gets down to minus two and my plus three. Well, the three plus three is a six, and his minus two on a six is a four. So he's just retreated again. He goes there. I had one movement point left, and I chose not to take the hex. I moved back a space. And you'll see why in a little bit. Uh, next up, I moved the American. This is dumb on my part. Really, really, really dumb. Uh, what's going to happen next? I moved the American airplane up. And I went after the Italian aircraft here. Which I should not have done. What I should have done is what I, you'll see it in a minute. So I go after his airplane. He's He can't hurt me, so it's like he just takes it. Then I played the surprise attack marker. If I'd played the surprise attack marker first... I could have, because I have this silly boat sitting in Southampton called Force H, this thing. I could have, if I'd played the surprise attack marker first, I could have used it. I could have used that boat to come down here and take out this last sortie on the Italian air. And then the American aircraft could have flown one sortie here, would have been four could have moved right on top of the BEF for five, so that then when I do the invasion out of Gabe's, because there's nothing to intercept me, and he sailed those guys back to Catina, 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 I can't pronounce that. Um, and then I went ahead and attacked there with a tank's marker and stuff. But I could have had the airplane sitting on the BEF with five and had an extra plus two. One, two, three, four, five. Which, you know, might have made a difference. Uh, as it was, he was at minus four and I was at uh, plus three and then minus two. So I was only plus one to minus four. I could have been plus three. Actually, I'm a zero, because I'm attacking the unit. I would have been plus two. So instead of a three, I would have had a five. You rolled a five minus one. Either one, it, either way, it would have ended up being a retreat, but it would have been a better move, I think. So pay attention to the surprise attack rules. You can use them sometimes. Anyway, I didn't chose not to take the hex. I don't know why I didn't take the hex. Oh, it's because I wasn't sure that the BEF was going to be able to um, push the tenth around. So, since I don't have any air power, so I think I was just trying to be super conservative here. And he loses another willpower, so now he's down to ten. Then the BEF launches its assault without air power. So it's plus one. He has nothing to play. So I'm plus three to his zero. And set my movement points to eight. And I rolled a two plus three is a five. So best I can do is retreat him. And he rolls slow enough to let me retreat him. Take the hex, attack again, throw the other tanks marker. Get a six plus three is a nine. It's like, yay, maybe I can get him flipped. And he rolled a four, just high enough to not be flipped. And then he moves there. And I make a slight error here, thinking it's only costing me two movement points. It actually cost me three. We'll correct that in a minute. Uh, 
I changed it to 1. I really should have been a 0. So actually that's a net 5, not a 6. And he rolled a 2, so he was retreated. So it goes there. And then that's when I realized that I had miscounted. So I actually changed my movement points. And we checked the combat result. A 5 to a 2 still would have been a retreat. So I spent one movement point to move there and attacked again. And all he did is retreat. And I chose not to take the hex. Um, I figured I'd stay on the road. It didn't make any real difference to me at this point. Um, if I could have gotten him flipped and eliminated, you know, then I could have been able to just walk, walk, waltz through El Elogea. Ah, that city there in the swamp. So. And I flew my airplane into Benghazi. And then I moved the ninth up here. And just chose to end my turn there. I moved the American 8th Fleet, that only had two sorties, into Gabe's to allow me to help interdict Italian supply. And I think I was done. Yep. Let's put that on the card. Then we had to go do supply. Um, I had three units over here. I can't supply the... Uh, the 8th Army because it's too far from a road. So it goes into low supply. The other three guys get supplied by the two convoys in Alexandria and Suez. The Americans should get... Uh, the British have to supply two, two units? Two units. So I use one on the British convoy and one on the American convoy. And in the American convoy in Benghazi has to take... Uh, two sorties to supply both units that are there. And we did supply before we I forgot that we had to do bombing. So that's what we're going to do next. Always forget to do things. Uh, and I run down that little corridor, and he chose not to do anything to me, I don't think. I showed him the... These are the... Uh, what it would have been at, and he said, nope, just go ahead. And I said, okay, well, I'll stop there. And then we were done, and we're on to Soviets? Yeah, we're on to the Soviets. Okay. So, here we are in the Soviet Union. Uh, not sure where I start here. Uh, So I started. Oh, now I'm doing airplanes. I got the guy in the wrong place. So um, I just figured the Germans are going to have enough points to bring back a bunch of their airplanes, but I didn't want them to come back where they would have four or five sorties. So all I'm doing is running him up. Basically, it's an economic warfare thing. If I can keep him only being able to start off at four sorties with his airplanes in the east... Maybe I can actually get an advantage at some point. Since it's poor weather, I start at minus two. He starts at minus one. Uh, I rolled a two, minus two, net one. He rolls a three, minus one, net two. So we should each take a sortie. Then it's uh, minus three to minus two. I rolled a 3, so I'm still a 1. He rolls a 6 minus 2 is a 4, so I take 2 sorties. Is 1. And now I think I switch. Oh, I guess I didn't. Yeah, I went minus 5 to minus 3. So each took one, and then I decided to go up here. Um, I'm a net minus four. He's a net minus four, so we just need to just run those up. There's my sword. He's not there. We go. <sighs> and where am I? Uh, this is me doing it. Same kind of thing down here against the fourth luft. That's what I'm doing. 
So I was a 6 minus 2 because that's what I started with, minus 2. He was minus 3. So he rolled a 1, I rolled a 6. So I got two sorties on him for that. Uh, then I think I go again. Minus 2 to his... Minus... Or five. And then we go. I'm assaulting Karkov. There you are. Uh, start with the armored unit there. So he's one for elite, one for armor. That's two. Plus two for a shock, plus one for a buddy. Uh, combat commitment, he didn't have anything. So it's just setting numbers. So I started off at I'm three, I'm not four, five, minus one for the weather and one for the city. So right now I'm starting off at plus three to plus two. And then I threw in the airplane and my heavy artillery because I really wanted to get that factory back. So now I'm at plus. 6 to plus 2, so hoping to force a retreat. 2 plus 6 is an 8, not very hopeful, but he managed to roll me only a 1 plus 2, so that's a 3. So he is retreated and flipped, so yay. The most important thing was he's retreated, so I got a factory. Uh, and, like I said, just for kicks, I'm keeping track of willpower. Uh, 1d6, 5. This is when my heavy artillery is at 5 months, so. That's the way most of my markers go, is 4, 5, 6 turns, so I don't get to use them as much as everybody else seems to. Uh, 37th Army. What am I doing? I have no idea what I'm doing. Oh, I moved the 33rd. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And, and and then I move the tank army one, two, three to attack here. So now I have uh, I can make the shock army the primary. So he's one plus two for a tank and poor. So that's three minus one. So right now it's plus two to plus two. Then I throw in this airplane that's there. So I get a six plus three is a nine to his. 3 plus 2 is a 5, so I forced a retreat. Uh, he chose to do that, and I went with the armored, and I took the infantry. Went 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Called an assault on the panzer. Wasn't sure if I was going to do it or not, but I figured if I call it, then I can always do it later. Uh, then, I think, yeah, I did these three on the 18th to see how that would work first. Uh, throw in I uh, throw in a tanks marker did I Let's see what was I at I was at one two three four minus one was three plus one was four no I just went with four I saved the tanks marker it's plus 4 to plus 2. I rolled a 6 plus 4 is a 10. He rolled a 4 plus 2 is a 6. So that's just, uh, just a uh, retreat, which you can't do, so he's flipped. Um, so then I went ahead and took a pot shot. I'm at uh, minus 1 to his 0. I threw in my airplane for his last sortie to make it 0 to 0, trying to outroll him. I rolled a 4. He rolled a three, so I did not roll him by enough, and he ignores me. Then I brought the third infantry down here to kind of make sure that I have a chance. And again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I did not resolve that right away. I went down here to attack the Yugoslavian. There. Uh, Uh, we, oh yeah, we're in combat commitment. He threw in his uh, support marker, and I threw in an airplane 
I don't know if I throw a tank in here. I throw a tank in here too. Yeah. So a tank and an airplane gives me an extra plus two. So one, two, three, four, five, six, minus one. So plus five to plus one. I rolled a four plus five is a nine. He rolled three plus one is a four, which is enough to not be flipped. He's just retreated. I believe. Nine to four. There's a retreat. So he's retreated. I took it with the infantry unit because didn't know, didn't want to break the continuity of my line. I want everybody to have a place to retreat to. And he rolled uh, a three for his. He rolls his attack die instead of uh, rolling the the single blue die. So he's coming back in three turns. Um, and then I think I just went up here and I said, let's go ahead and take our pot shot here. Um, so I started off. And then said, Before I do the assault, do that, I'm going to actually play my partisans on the tank. So that he starts off at one. And I throw in my tank and my airplane. So the tank makes me have one of these guys be start off at a one, two, three, minus one. So I'm plus two to his plus one. Oops, hitting undoes. Sorry. And then I rolled a five plus two is a seven. I'm like, oh, maybe I get him to retreat. And he rolls a four plus one and says, nah, I'm not retreating. I'm tanks, I don't retreat. Then I thought about other things to do around, you know, whether I should move like the 51st somewhere or something. And then I said, nope, I just got to remember to move the Turks into their port, which I did. And then I was done. So now we, uh, that's my partisan die roll as a four, so it comes back in four turns. And we're in no supply phase, and this is where you'll see the Italians uh, exercise their right. Since this airplane's in low supply, it cannot be replaced. So, and it's not likely he's going to be able to get it anywhere where it can get replaced because of the way I blocked off Tobruk and hold Benghazi. So he just said, the heck with it, take that off the board, he'll build it next turn. And... Then we went on to other no supplies and nobody has anything. Replacements. The axis is now... Why am I not jumping? It should be. Oh, he's doing... I don't know what he's doing. Oh, that's me setting the sorties in the eliminated box. So now he goes over here into Russia. And he's going to Bring back a couple of airplanes here. The one in Minsk, the one outside of Dubnostrik. So that was six. If you'll notice, he only had 15. So that was six. And basically, by flipping these two infantry units, I kept him from getting another airplane worth of sorties. Uh, then he moves, does his two infantry units. So that now he's down to seven. And then he goes... It does the airplane in Palermo, and then he does the airplane in the south of France. Because he's figuring he's going to need to use it to go take me out of Brest or whatever. And now he does the, um, he's doing the Italians over here. So he's doing two sorties on the convoy. and does two sorties on the fleet there too. And then I think he does the other convoy, right? So and then we go. Uh, we're doing the we're doing the west, but it's not. I didn't switch the replacements thing. So I did the fighters, uh, the fighter in Egypt, and the fighter over there. Then I did the fleet, uh, the Mediterranean fleet, because I wanted to be able to intercept this. This fleet's got to be intercepted and stopped. 
from supplying what's in North Africa. I need to try and get them if at all possible. Uh, and then I did the convoy in Suez, the convoy in Casablanca. And then I did the bomber command for my last four. And I'm done. Now I'm just doing Americans. They come down to, uh, fleet comes down to, the guys in Benghazi come down to, airplane comes down to, and I think I'm done. I'm over to the Soviets. Um, I started off thinking I was going to replace both of my face down ground units. And I thought about it. I said, I know it's going to be poor weather because that's the way it is in Russia in March and April. Poor or severe. This, air, this armor can still give me plus two next turn in some combat as a support unit. So I started to flip them. I said, wait a minute, I'm not going to flip them because right now I have, I had 17 and two for the um, guards unit. If I don't spend the other two, I can take down all five of my airplanes. So I just decided, the heck with it, I'm going to take down all my airplanes. So uh, these guys come back to four. He goes down to zero. This guy comes down to two, and this guy comes down as a three. So I have I have minor air superiority uh, in certain sections of the front. Uh, mind you, it's poor weather, and that doesn't really help me that much. But just the idea that I have better, more air sorties than he does, that, that makes me feel a little more comfortable with from any kind of counterattacks you might launch. Uh, upgrades. We went into the Soviet upgrade, and they pull a couple. Uh, yeah, the third army that I had moved to 2044, and an army from up here in 1143. They go away, and the fourth guard's army goes where the third was. And then I think I did that one more time. Yeah, I took the two guys that were on the coast there in front of the German 4th Army and put the 6th Guards there. Now, I still have a Guards unit left, but I'm hanging on to it for situations like this where you get somebody kind of slightly forward, like an infantry unit, has his nose popped out. I thought about doing it for the 43rd, and I said it's probably not worth it because he's probably only going to face Yugoslavs. So not likely to die in poor weather. But... You know, you have an infantry unit sticking his nose out like this. Uh, then you might want to be able to have a guards unit to just drop there so that, you know, it's harder for them to dislodge in there half the turn. So that's why I saved it. Uh, this is where I messed. Uh, I keep forgetting. Um, this is one of the things that I can never remember is to look in my surprise attack marker holding box to, to see the builds. I really wish these things would just go to the mobilization box. So I would look there, because I looked and I said, oh, nobody's got anything to mobilize, but the West did. And I get that at the end of the turn after I actually saved the game. Uh, we also didn't move these things in the end turn vein. So when we went back to move those, I went, oh, I did have a build for the U.S., and they, he just said, go ahead and build it. So, uh, so we go to the end of turn phase, and this is us just getting our stuff back. The Germans get... Uh, their tanks, the Italian tanks, a ground support, and his surface action. So now I'll have to escort things in the Atlantic. And the Russians just got, you know, their tanks back. Americans and British got their tanks back. And I did get an ultra with the West. So there is that. We move to March 1943, and then we will be rolling the weather. So I'll just bring that up so you guys can see. I always go through this. And... He rolled a 1 4, 4 So we go to the march line. 1 is poor in the cold zone. 4 is actually severe in the mild zone. And uh, in the warm zone, he rolled another 4, which put it to poor weather in the Mediterranean. And there you have it. So that is February 1943 in the East First Campaign. Uh, the Russians made a little bit of a push, uh, you know, bent the line a little bit. Biggest thing was I got to I got take back a factory, so I'll have an extra two production points next turn. Um, you know, I'm I'm asserting my air superiority at the moment. Unfortunately, that's probably not going to last very long because I'm pretty.
pretty sure at least one of those airplanes in the West is coming back over here. Just as soon as he gets done taking uh, the French port of Brest, as soon as he's done with that, these armored units and that airplane are probably coming east for the summer. So I do not see myself being able to maintain this kind of massive assault. He does have problems in the in the med. Um, we both agree that uh, he miss, missed his setup. He probably should have had a garrison in Tripoli, a garrison in Tobruk, a real infantry unit like on this ridge line, and a real infantry unit on the border with uh, French North Africa. And then it would have been much, much longer before I would be to this point, probably three or four turns before I would get this far. So a little bit of a misplay on the initial setup, but I'm still not, I mean, it's still going to take me a couple of turns to probably end up clearing all this out because he managed to keep this guy in supply. So now I'm going to have harder time trying to take out Tobruk. Just hope to get these two infantry units. I, I'd like to have them destroyed so we lose willpower rather than going to no supply and saying, eh, we'll just leave and not lose a willpower. But we'll see if I can get that far. I'm not sure if I can. And one, two, three, four, five, six. So I don't know what that German Air Force is going to do. It might just give up the ghost here and fly off to the east in his next turn as well. Okay, uh, that's it. Let's go over to where we're supposed to be in the corner so I can do my sign off. And there you have it. That was February 1943, the East Front, uh, East First campaign. As always, I'm Dren608. If you like my videos, please subscribe. Hit that like button so the YouTube algorithms will keep these things up for everybody else to find. And we'll be back with another in this series in about a week. Until then, stay safe and bye-bye.